Okay, there we go, guys. Just welcome again this morning. Just going to do some testimonies today and, you know, what God has done and giving glory for this. And it's such an awesome thing to see how God can, what God can do. And He continues to do all the time through this ministry. And we give Him all the glory for that. And, um, you know, as, as I said, this morning is only women, but I think it's about 75% just women in church because women actually, you know, are more connected to, you know, the Holy Spirit, I think, sometimes. And they know what is really needed and they know what, they know about security and they're looking for God actually more than men do. But that's how it is. That's how the church looks. And um, so I want to start uh, by calling Carlisle to come to the front and just give us her testimony. Just give her a round of applause. Carlisle, come up. Okay, there you go. Morning, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to stand here in front of you all and praise God for the opportunity. Um, thinking back, I'll start at the start where I was about a year ago. Any case, um, I came to this church about a year ago in October, just after a serious car accident, which a 18-ton truck drove into the back of my Reynold Quick. As you all know, not a very strong car, small car. The car was literally smashed up into the driver's seat. And at, at that, that point, point, getting out of that car, I realized that I didn't know where I was going. Whether, if it turned out differently, whether I would go to hell or go to heaven when I got out of that car. And it's sad that it took such a shock and such a revelation to get me to that point to actually turn myself back to God. Because I classified myself as an atheist last year. I didn't believe in God. I didn't see the point of God. I didn't believe that God existed because I was looking at the world and I was looking at what was going on in the world and how could somebody let things like that happen. But I got out of the car, I fell down on my knees and I prayed for the first time in probably eight years. And I prayed to God to send me the right people across my path and praise the Lord. He sent one specific person who spoke to me and convinced me to come back or to come to church at all. So firstly, it didn't come for the right reasons, um, I have to admit, but I stayed. And God has done such amazing things in my life. I only going to mention a few because my time is limited and as past the Yaku said, we've just got women, so I'm sure everybody's going to talk about uh, it's one of our gifts. <laughs> so, yeah, basically the biggest thing I have to say that I can give glory to God for is earlier this year I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought I was going to die. Being dramatic, being a woman, my head went worst case scenario. I told my best friend I was going to die within three months. But we kept it quiet. We got the necessary people at church to help us pray. We didn't tell everybody because we didn't want people to be in the situation where they were forced or that I felt forced to believe other people's views. Because already in the world, people were telling me, go for the operation, go get the treatment, Be, go the safe route. Because that's what the world knows. The world doesn't know the glory of God, and the world doesn't know what God is capable of. So we had prayer sessions. I came for prayer. We renounced everything. We just prayed that God's will would succeed in my life. So I let it go. I let go and I let God. About three months later, I had to go for a follow-up. And in that follow-up, when they did the scans, the doctor actually asked me if those were my medical records. 
because none of the tumors were visible. So, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's all I can say. So, yes, I started out here. I came for prayer. Didn't really know what to expect when I came in the first night. Dark church, um, <laughs> as you can see. Not the churches I was used to. I grew up in traditional churches, so it's not really the picture of the church that I had in my head. And if you told me a year later that I would be here helping build a church, I would have probably told you a few things that I cannot repeat into the mic now. But yes, I came for prayer. I came for spiritual healing. We dealt with a lot. I mean, who in this world hasn't gone through a lot as a child? I mean, if you just look at the video circulating right now of what children are going through and what children are exploited and what basically what, what they need to listen to and what they see at school. I mean, a lot of us are still fortunate to not have had the exposure that the youth has right now. But still, we had the same problems. It just wasn't exploited to the point that it is now. We all had bullying at school, most of us. I myself went through bullying. I went through sexual abuse. I went through physical abuse. I went through a failed engagement. And I thought I was fine. But it's like a lot of people do. They plaster something up, so they cover it up. You think you're fine, but on the inside, it's not fine. And for the first time when I came for prayer, I realized that I wasn't as fine as I thought I was originally. <laughs> but God showed the people in the prayer groups what needed to be worked on. We worked through it. And I have to say, praise God for such an amazing support structure in this, in this church. This isn't a church. This is a family. I have never felt more of a family than I have in this church. And... I just want to say thank you as well to every person who's been a part of my journey up until this point. And for everybody still coming, anybody watching, anybody still on their way, thank you. Because God isn't done with any of us. He will continue his work up until the day of completion. And we will need help. And we will need people around us to support us and to assist us in our journey. Because... We can't do this alone. So, yeah, yeah, basically now, all of that behind me, still working through things as I go along. Little things pop up, but as I say, we have a support structure to deal with this. And I still go for prayer. Every now and then I book myself in <laughs> for a bit of extra surgery. Um, I'm now part of the prayer groups myself. Every Thursday and every Sunday evening, where it's needed. I myself drive all the way from Pretoria. Um, there's a lot of churches over there, but I haven't found this over there. So, and now also, I'm a part of the Children's Church, which I also didn't think a year ago <laughs> I would have any kids around me at all. So, yeah, I'm blessed to be a part of the Children's Church as well. And I just want to say that. In a world that is so filled with fakeness and with counterfeit, it is something rare and beautiful to find authenticity like you do at His Healing Hands Church. And I just want to say to all the leaders that have assisted each one of us in our journeys, both the Yaku and as well as my mentors, thank you for the time. Thank you for giving your time to God and thank you for teaching me to put God first and to rely solely on God in my life. Thank you, guys. Uh, hi, everyone. If I speak in Afrikaans, I do apologize because I'm not English. So if there is a problem, please just excuse me for that. Um, so my journey started here about eight months ago. 
um, before I came here, I suffered from severe depression. I had an illness called von Willebrand's disease, which meant that I could bleed to death at any time. I was in a car accident or someone shoved me. Um, I also went through abuse, physical, emotional, sexual abuse in my life. And um, I was at that point where I wanted to take my own life. I don't want to live anymore. And I saw my husband. And at that point, he was the only one that believed in me. He was my only support system. And I realized I have to do something in my life in order to keep my support system to keep the one person I really, really love, because I was about to lose everything. And I came here broken, totally broken. Um, I can't explain to you through which isolation I went. I don't want to go to friends. I don't want to go to family. I just wanted to sit on my couch, watch my television, and just shut out the whole world. That's where I was. So when I came here, I didn't want to go for prayer at first because I was ashamed. I was ashamed of trying to take my own life, of the things I've done, the things I went through. And luckily I have a friend supporting me sitting in church today. Um, if it wasn't for her, I don't think we would have been here. I don't think I would have found what I was searching for. I don't think my husband would have found what he was searching for because we were church hopping. We were searching for a church at that point. And when we walked through that doors, the Lord used music to bring me back. To him, because through the praise and worship in this church, I knew I had to come for healing. Um, I knew I had to change my life. So I came for the prayer sessions. It took a lot of courage. <laughs> I um, most probably shared things with them that I wouldn't have shared with anyone else. But that's the good thing, because there's no judgment here. You don't get judged for what you've been through. Um, and that gave me the opportunity to free myself from everything that was hurting me, from everything that was drowning me inside. And today I can say I don't suffer from von Willebrands anymore. I am healed. I don't have depression anymore. I, don't have, I haven't taken these pills in eight months. I went from eight tablets a day to one. And um, it's only by the grace of God and by the help of this wonderful people sitting in front of me. Thank you so much. Um, all glory is to God. He's opened a door for me that I've closed myself. So a few years ago, I worked at a primary school and God gave me the opportunity to go to this wonderful high school that I wanted to be at. And I decided, no, I'm not going there because I've got a different opportunity and I'm going to take that opportunity. Today I'm standing in front of you three years later and I've applied at a job at the same school which I, <laughs> which I didn't want to go to. So... I got the job, I'm starting in January, <laughs> praise to God, <laughs> and I had to walk around the mountain to get there. So thank you guys, um, all glories to God. I don't make a decision without him anymore. I ma don't make good decisions anymore, I make God decisions. So make those God decisions in your life. Thank you.
Morning everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Carmen. Um, I arrived here in April. Um, I just want to go a little bit back before that. Um, I was at a very bad place in my life. I knew God. I, I've been, I was saved for many years, um, but I backslid. And I backslid so far away from him that I was also... Thank you, Jesus. And I also wanted to take my own life. And I was actually sitting on a bed, um, on my bed, and I was, I was fighting with the Lord. And I, I was saying to him, Lord, is this, is this all you've created me for? Um, just to sit here and want to die. Um, I don't want to live. My marriage is falling apart. My life is falling apart. Um, is this what you've created me for? And I don't want to do this anymore. I feel like I can just take the gun and just shoot myself. But you know what? The Lord is so faithful. And I'm sorry, I'm very emotional. But, um, and then I said to the Lord, you know what, Lord? Um, I feel like I've got this heart of stone inside of me, and I don't know how to get it out. And then the Holy Spirit, when I look back now, I know that it was the Holy Spirit. But then I didn't know because I was so blinded. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said to me, um, I did not create you for this. Um, there's something more. And I did not give you a heart of stone. Go to Ezekiel, and he gave me the, the chapter and verse where he spoke to me and said, I will take out that heart of stone and I will put in a heart of flesh. And I was like, okay, Lord, well, if you're going to do this, then I need a church. So you need to do this, because I don't know where to go. <laughs> and it's only the Holy Spirit who can do something like this. Um, I sat speaking to um, a person who was in the world, and she told me that she came to this church because they wanted to get married. But the pastor said, no, it's the third time that you want to get married, so you need to come for counseling. So you need not, you mustn't go to that church, Okay. So the Holy Spirit said to me, that's the right church. You need to go there. And um, when my husband and I, when my husband came home and we were fighting, and I said to him, are you willing to go for counselling? So he said, yeah, well, let's, let's do it. So um, I looked for them on the internet and I found them and um, I booked for counselling and we came, <laughs> and the very first time that we were here, shame poor John, I'm sorry John, um, when, I, when my husband and I walked in, <laughs> it was just men, and I was like, hmm, I'm outnumbered. <laughs> so when we came in, I was so broken, and I was so, I just wanted my way. Um, and when we went into counselling, John started speak to, speaking to me, and I was like, no, you've already lost me, sorry. And um, then they, they prayed for me and they, they were like, if you want to get healed, if you want your marriage to work, um, are you willing to come again? I was like, yeah, but I'm not coming to you guys. I want, I want someone else. <laughs> so um, the Lord set up for me another meeting for us. And you know what? When I look back, I can just see his hand. And I'm so grateful that he saved me. Because you know what? Where I was going wasn't a good place. And today I just want to tell you that the enemy is a liar. He is a liar. What Jesus did for us on the cross that day, when he was hanging there, he did it for me and he did it for you. So it doesn't matter where you are in your life. I'm sorry. I've just, I'm so, I can't say thank you enough to the Lord where he's brought me from. I started coming for prayer and um, I had a spirit of Jezebel. <laughs> so that's why I didn't want to come for prayer and that's why it was so hard for me. But you know what? The Lord started delivering me from all these things in my life that didn't mean anything. And I always believed that the Lord 
did love and he did die on the cross, but he did it for all of you, but he didn't do it for me. So that's what I always believed. Even though I was a Christian for a long time, um, I thought I had to like perform to, to get to heaven. Um, and you know what? For the first time in my life, I really believed that Jesus died for me. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Because I never believed it. And then we had... Uh, um, we had our prayer group because I also joined the, the, the ministry because you know what, freely you've received, freely you need to give. And there's so many broken people out there and you just need to be willing. I was, I just said to the Lord, Lord, here I am. I'm willing. I don't know if I'm going to do this right, but I trust you. And um, <laughs> at, the, at the prayer, um, we had like a, a supper for everyone. And the, <laughs> everyone got a card. And my card said, the Lord rejoices over you. And for the first time in my life, I really, really believe it. And I just want to praise him and I just want to honor him and glorify him this morning. And I just want to say thank you to every single person in this ministry. Thank you, Pastor Yaku. Thank you, John. Thank you so much for being so kind and not judging me. And just loving me. This really feels like a family and I'm so grateful. Thank you. Morning, Ella. My name is Nikita. I hope you like that I can Afrikaans speak. Um, okay, I will begin to say, um, I have now my first five months of work. Um, ek het my man van die begin van ons verhouding van omtrent meer as drie jaar dat ek hom veraf god. Ek het hom op een pedersel gesit en hom omboog god gestel. Um, ek het hom as perfect gesien, behalwe vir die feit dat uit sy vorige ex-meisies seksuele verhouding het al salta is saamgekom en die Jessie was per het het baie in ons verhouding ingekom. Maar behalwe vir dit was hy die perfectse man en ek kon nie fout om sien. Ek het hom rechtig op, op die troon gesit. So, steeds weke terug, toe het ek uitgevind dat hy vir meer as twee jaar in ons verhouding en verloving aan pornografie versla was. En ja, dit het my absoluut gebreek, want dit was die laaste ding wat ek verwacht het. Ek bedoel, ons is nou maar eers een paar maandjies getrouwd en saam met die pornografie het al sy leens begin service, omdat hy te bang was om vir my die waarheid te vertel oor wat alles gebeur het en omdat hy bang was oor hoe ek gaan reageer. Ek het toe dier die tijd besef dat ek meer broken was as wat ek gedink het ek is. En het is asof die laagies van my seer stikkie vir stikkie begin onthal was. Ek was my hele leven lang een groot kind van heren. Um, ek het ongelooflike passie voor hom en ek het my hele leven lang na by hom geleef. Maar toe dit gebeur het ek, ek het vir die vrouw, wat het ek verkeerd gedoen? Hoe kon hy toelaat dat die gebeur? Ek het voor ons trouw, ons het al twee saam die Daniel vast gedoen en ons het seker gemaakt ons hevelik is in die Heerese wil en dit is wat hy vir ons wil hee. So toe kon ek nie verstaan, hoe kon hy dit toelaat nie? En hy het alweer vir my gesê, maar jy het jou man van afgod, jy het hom op een pedestal gesit, jy het hom op my troon probeer sit. Um, ek het een moeilike kinderlaag gehad, ongelukkig. Um, my ouwers het een baie lelike hevelik gehad van aanranding en um, ek was gemolesteer, ek het baie trauma gegaan. En my voorvaders het ook baie sondes na ons generatie toe oorgebring met vry meselarij en so. En ek het besef dat al hierdie goedkies het gemanifesteer in die waarheid wat toe uitgekom het vir my man. Want ek het in alle eerlijkheid, ek het my man aangerand die aand toe ek dit uitvind. En ek voel dis my maase, dis al wat ek geken het. En ek het ongelooflike grief vir intimiteit gehad, want ek het dit as lelik geseen, want dis al wat ek geken het. Um, ek het ongelooflik rejection ervaar, haat, en my vertrouwen was gebreek, selfs in God. Ek kon nie om vertrou om hierdie te genees nie. Um, my leven in Evelik was in Skerwe, want John Louis was my safe haven, en toe ek nou nergens in God om te gaan, het ek het my vertrouwen in die Heere verloor, en ek skwaad vol, man, hoe kan hierdie gebeur? En een af te staan ek voor my boekrak, en ek weet nie daarach wat het ek gedoen, maar ek het so gekyk vir die boekrak, en al die ander boek het uitgebleur, maar pas door Jakun en Erika's boek, draadwerk van die hevelik, het vir my soos baie duidelik uitgestaan. Ek het omgekry by trouwe hevel, maar die die. 
En toe ek die boek begin lees, en toe voor in die boek te sien, ek maar, uh, dis die healing, hier is die healing hands ministry, en ek denk toe dadelijk myself ek hou, maar ek word die healing, dis wat ek word. En dis toe waar ons toe in die begin het, wakkel het op Facebook kontak, en ons um, eerste sessie boek en so. Um, dit is vir my gevoel soos een familie, wat ons met oop arms aanvaar het, en by the grace of God, het hulle die laaste van my en John Louise Skouwers afgehaal, en het voor ons neergepak, en vir ons is telke my hier gaan ons begin. Um, hulle het my hart stikkie vir stikkie oop, oopgevou, en my laat dit sê, ons baie meer wat skuil in my is, wat ek gedink het al is. Elke dingetje wat ek opgetree het, was amper soos een vierpeil, daar was een rede hoekom het afgeveer was. Um, toe ek hier aankom, moes arme pastoor Jakko eindelijk niet vieren doodslaan, want ek was op so'n punt dat ek alles grond toe wou afbrand. So ja, ek en pastoor Jakko grap maar oor hoeveel dinge ons al soveel deurgewerk het in my, ons vraal by wat het boek noem, hoeveel trek ons. So ja, elke keer as ons iets uitgesorteer het in myself, is al as van nog iets geservice het, en pastoor Jakko sê nou raak my die saad, dan is eindelijk so voorspelbaar, want Elke keer as ek iets uitgesorteer het, dan sê vir my, maar wacht ek nog hierdie op jou, of ek het nog hierdie op jou. En hy is eindelijk net bezig om onszelf te ontbloot, want as het nie is vir dit nie, kan ek nie dier hierdie seer waar die oor dit kom nie. Um, ek het een ongelooflike probleem met kontrol, ek is een ongelooflike perfectionist in OCD, en in hierdie tyd moes ek besef, maar ek het nie beheer nie. Ek is nie God nie, en ek moes my man oorgeaneer en sê, die om het om. Um, Ek, dit is nog heel tyd in my persoonlijkheid geïntegreerd en ek is op een stadium so erg dat met my insecurity, dat as ek en John Louis bevond in die mol geloop het, moes hy groot toe kyk, hy het vir hom gesê, jy lig nie op kop van die grond af om vir enig ander meisie te kyk nie, want dit is hoe insecure ek oor my self gevoel het. Maar ek kan sê, na vier sessies sal met die zeling eens, kan ek, ek oop eerlijk sê, ek kan in die mol loop en al like het net of hy vir baie meisie kyk, ek denk ek vir my self is ok, ek weet hy is lief vir my. So, ek het al so ver gekom dat ek vir baie dit kon kom. Ja, ek is losgemaak van baie seer, um, die saad dan probeer my man of sees herinner, van kom, gaan sit in die hoekie, kry jouself jammer, kry my terug aan my gat in, maar ek het swak daar, maar dan herinner ek hom aan sy toekomst, en ek weet van my kracht leid, ek word gereeld hoor, James 4 verse 7, um, sat met your staff to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you, Luke 10, 19, I've given you the authority to chop on snakes and scorpions and over all power of the enemy. So ja, ek voel amper niet, dit is die lekkerste ding vir my om op die donderdag hier te kom en te kan, of weet wat ek nog kan laat ontbloot, zodat so ek een stap in nader in geneesing is. Um, ek weet my nog steeds kontrol vat, um, en my selfpartij daar bejammer, maar ek sien vir John Lee, die het Godse genade, en die ding wat ek nie genoem het nie, hoe is het seker genoem het is, hy, toe ek uitgevind het van sy pornografie verslaving, het hy een jaar terug opgehou met dit, uit sy eie, uit so, halleluja vir dit, by the grace of God, hy het alleen in die pad sal reere gestap, en ja, um, ook dat, baie blokkasies is uit my leven uit losgemaak, want m- met my ene reeling het, ruis met die ene hand vir my gesê, is ervaring die geest, taal op my tong, en ek toegde vir myself, ok, <laughs> maar, daar het twee dag later, by een prayer meeting, dus het asof die taal in het surf is, en dit is my ongelooflik, want het het my dat besef, daar was eindelijk baie meer blokkasies, as wat ek gedink het al was, so ja, ek fight elke dag een battle, um, die heren is bezig om ons op te leid, hy is bezig om ons warriors te maak, en hy is bezig om vir John Louis ook op te leid, om die geestelike leier te wees in ons verhouding. So ja, ek het geleer om te, sub- te submit onder my man, nie kontrol te bevat nie, en onder die heren te submit, en vir hom te sê, thy will be done. Um, ek het discernment gekry, om te kan weet precies wat kom van die heren af, en wat nie, en waar die wortels vandaan kom, en Ek het een fire of the holy spirit, soos ek nie vir julle kan beskryf nie. Ek is meer vastberade as ooit om die satan te oorbring. So ja, um, God het een plan vir my, vir John Louis, vir ons hevelik, en ek weet hy die wonderlijke mense, Rosemary, Ashley, Carlisle, die pastoor Jakko, allemaal gebruik om ons te laat besef, dat ons mekaar sy glasies nie kan volmaak nie, en net, net dat hier alleen ons kan genees. Want jy sal 53 vers 5 sê, by his wounds we have been healed. So ja, ons kan, ons hy mekaar nooit kon volmaak nie, ons het alweer nog een pad in te stap, saam en afsonderlik, maar ek weet, by the grace of God, gaan God hierdie mes into a message van her. In Romeine 8 vers 28 sê, hy laat alles ten goede laat mee wat vir die wat hy lief het. So ja, ek moet het afsluit dit te sê, Thorin Wells, een liekie, um, wat ek gaar luister, ek luister om oor en oor, en is so baie van toepassing, soos Kala al ook nou nog sê, God's not done with you. Thank you. Okay, I just want to say thank you 
to all the <coughs> ladies that gave their testimony today. And I just want to once again just say glory to God for doing these things. And still, you know, this is, this is the vision, this is the mission, to get people loose from all the ties and all the things that hold them back. Because you can be so used to your problem that you can actually just live with it. And your, le- your life miserable every day. And God has more. You know, like they said also, God has another level for you. He's not done with you. He's never finished. And he's always got something that he wants to work on. And I see people come in sometimes. They, they work through a few sessions and then they stop. And then the enemy starts to use the other cards that he's got left. And he starts to play them. And I can see how they get deceived, how they get pulled, pulled away, and how they, they, they start to listen to the enemy again. And, and they just lose their healing. And it's such a terrible thing to see. But it takes discipline. You need to understand that you, know, you have to keep your healing. You can lose your healing. That you need to push and, and, and push in and keep on pushing in. And, and stay with the Lord, you know, because it's a way of life. You know, to be a child of God is a way of life that we have to, you know, see that it's good for me to do this, you know. And it's, it's, it's a happy day when you can hear these testimonies. I always tell the people, I find joy in your testimony because I know that I could be part of what God is doing for you. And that's, that's our reward, you know, just to see what God has done. You know, and to be part of that, it makes us extremely happy. And, and I believe that, you know, every time I see healing take place, I know that we serve a living God that's done it again. And it takes people from, from being blind and then they can see, you know, maybe not always physical, but from an emotional blindness to an emotional seeing and that they can get free and that they can get better results. It's an awesome thing to, to be part of. And so we just give God glory and hopefully, you know, people can get something from this because I know that the testimony is a, is a um, container of a miracle. Because when people hear your testimony, they find hope and they see that there's a way maybe for me also to get rid of my thing. If God did it for her, he can do it for me. So I'm just going to take what I heard today and I'm going to run with that and I'm going to look for what she's got until I get it and I'm going to push in. If that's you, you've got to make a call. You've got to you know, arrange a prayer meeting and say, look, I'm tired of pulling this weight. I'm tired of carrying these things around and I want to get better results because your life needs to work. Not only work, but needs to shine into this dark world as a hope for other people. You know, people will see you and they will see, no, what do you take? What do you drink? What pills are you on? You tell them the gospel. Understand? And you bring and you bring people in as part of what, what we are called for. And so I just want to, you know, just give God glory. God, uh, you know, and, and you might sit and you might listen today and you might think, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. Maybe you are just used to your uh, broken, you know, um, clutch. Maybe you are just used to your car taking long to start. Maybe it was never supposed to take so long to start. Maybe your life was supposed to be better, but now you settled for the thing that is not right, you know. Maybe you are falling into the same trap over and over, pornography, whatever it is, and God wants to take you out from there. That can be a route that we have to look for. You are producing fruits, and you need to find out where those fruits come from. You get bad fruits and good fruits. And good fruits don't come on on, uh, bad trees. Bad fruits don't come on good trees. So if it's a bad fruit, there's a bad root, and we have to find that thing. Before it ruins your life, before it destroys your future, that's what God wants for you. Good results. But you need to understand that you are far more complex is what you think. That there's millions of files in your mind that can be, you know, affected. But you can run 999 okay ones, but that one that is corrupt is the one that actually costs you a lot. Because once you get to that file, you know, it can destroy your marriage. It can destroy whatever you have. You can lose your job just by rebellion. Just because you haven't forgiven your mother for doing what she did. 
and you don't understand how dynamic your mind is and how it actually can affect your life. And so you need to come here. We need to pray with you. We're not like you heard you. We're not going to judge you. We're not going to, ex- you know, we all come from hurt. We all come from uh, bad results. And that's why we have compassion. And that's why people that work here, all of us have a story. You know, all of us had bad results. And God wants to give you hope and God wants to take you out. And he wants to also use you in his kingdom. I mean, if you can get to that full circle where you can actually take what you have and share it with someone else, I think that's what God's plan is. I don't think God's plan is to fat, to feed you until there's fat on your cheeks and then you are okay. No, you are supposed to open the tap and let the water flow through you. And that, that keeps us clean. You get a reminder in a prayer session that you need to you know, work on this thing here. Because you see what it did for this woman. You see what it did for this man. Watch this. Watch this. Because if you're going to keep on clicking there, you're going to get that same result here. Look at them losing their marriage here. And God, the Holy Spirit will say, watch it. And that's because you are in the place of healing and deliverance all the time. You can see the effects and what the enemy's plans are for the people. And, and don't wait for it to be too late. We have lots of people that come through here. We cannot save every marriage because some people are too far gone. They did too many things already that they can't reverse. You see, it's a problem. There's a lot that you can reverse because God can remove it as far as the east is from the west. But you need to understand that, you know, when you know that you, you, you need help, respond. And you need help. Let me tell you, all of us need help all the time. We all live in this world. We know that how it works. And so get your, you know, your session booked and let us help you. And let, let God show you who you are really and how strong you are in him so that um, you can get better results. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father. I pray every person that listened to this this morning, God, I pray that you will draw and, and help us to respond. Help us to respond. God says, just take a step. Just take one step. Just make a choice. And I will do the rest. You make a choice. You arrive. And I'll do the rest. It's going to be by faith. There's no person that, that, that just got help. They all went to Jesus and asked for help. Help me, son of God. Have compassion on me, son of God. Help me, son of David. What can I do for you? That's the first step. That is the step that only you can take. And God says it's, your, it's in your power to do that. That is by faith. God says you will be healed by faith. Through faith. Yes, God said your, your faith has set you free. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has delivered you. Faith, faith, faith. And God says it's easy. You just take a step. You send a message and you say, help me. I need help. And we'll book you into a session and God will start in you. You open up. You say there's no limits. Take it all out, God. Come into my heart. All the rooms I choose to open. Because I don't want no darkness, no wickedness in my life left. I want to see your will. I want to understand your plan. And I want to get to the A plan of my life. If that's you, you've got to do something about that. Father, I pray that your fire will burn and that that I see that some people are touched now today by the fire of God. But react before it cools down. React before you don't feel the same anymore. So Father, help us, guide us, lead us, heal us, restore us, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.